My sword is sharp, my shield and belt, my pride will waver not. I face my foe, I labor low, I fight them without fear. If I should fall, because I've gone live and they all heard you say that, so it was good. See, so, hi everyone. Uh, thanks <laughs> for coming along to the stream. Uh, I'm keeping my record of uh, catching people just before they do everything, before they talk and are completely unprepared, so we're doing that. I did it with Matt, I've done it with everyone. I have now done it with Helen. We are good. How are you all doing tonight? Are you all doing well? So yeah, everyone's everyone's here. This is good. I hope you've all got your lovely curries, pizza, KFC, takeaways galore. Uh, I didn't come up with any logos there, so that's an interesting one. Hefty thumbs. So yeah, thanks for coming on. I thought uh, the Friday ones have, have become quite a chill stream and they've become quite nice and just we just sit down we'll chill out have a chat be quite wholesome and look forward to doing what we're doing talk about what we're going to do at empire and all of that sort of stuff so um i had i had my pizza and ready to chill excellent that's the good stuff so as many of you know uh helen here is my other half my bet much better half and also the mod of the channel that uh, uh, may change yeah. because um, I might be getting well I might look at getting another mod to give a hand because we seem to be getting we're getting more and more people coming in which is awesome so how are you doing then hun you all right <laughs> I've been relegated to the bedroom Yes, yes, I know. Yeah. You're relegated to the bedroom with all that giant uh, box of soap behind you. Yeah, the box of soap, the really nice poly filler. Yeah, we're doing well. It's really good. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, as, as some of you might not know, uh, know this, you might not know this, uh, me and Helen actually met at Empire, thanks to uh, me, I will say. I say 
Justin. What did you say Justin for? I was the one who walked over and said hello. And then ultimately Mark Humes. Yeah, but we don't talk about that in public. So, yep, yeah, so uh, I, I walked along uh, and uh, Helen is a tad quiet. I have got you. Yeah, I've got you turned up to the maximum at my end, so you'll have to turn oh, your sofa. Right. So go into your audio oh, yeah. settings and turn up your uh, input. Yes, I know how to do that. Helen is a bit quiet. Also, show us the soap. Oh God, there's a lot of soap. Uh, yeah. So in your Discord, in the bottom left. I'm, I'm doing it. Yeah, you sure. You. You sure. You Keep going. To turn it up. Yeah. Like this. Do Keep, I sound better? You are getting a bit louder. Me yet, chat. Go on, turn yourself up a I'm bit just more. Turn it all the way down. Look at that. There is no more. Is that it? Is it? That's it. Shall I scream louder? Well, you could try it's talking. That would yet. be. You could try talking. That would be a good start. That's better. There we go. Excellent. Oh, really close. No one asked me to. <laughs> so, you've been coming to Empire now for what? Three years? Too long. Four years? Four years. Four and years. you had a bit of an indifferent start, and now you've made, you've got your new character, haven't you? And yeah. you've got your new character, and you're doing a lot better. I mean, I can, I can briefly go over why I had such an indifferent start. Well, you do 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 your do your, in, do your introductions. Tell tell everyone about yourself and and stuff, and then you can tell everyone about your indifferent stuff. Sorry, I shouldn't have laughed when I said that. <laughs> what a dick! Um, <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I'm Helen. I'm the mod for this channel, and Steve hasn't managed to get rid of me in four years, so. Yay. Um, I played, yeah, played Empire for four years, and I started out in Navarre, and I now play in Wintermark, in Hearst Hall with, um, with Steve and various other people. Steve being the only notable one. Um, and currently play a kind of uh, apothecary slash mystic slash occasional preachy priest. Very rarely preachy priest, mostly preachy to people who I know won't cry. Um, that that that's really the summary. Okay. So, what was your indifferent start? My indifferent start was because I created. So I, I went into Navarre because I really love the style of Navarre and because it was a, you know, newbie friendly in terms of kit and and kind of stuff like that. Um, and I uh, went on to the Empire forums, met a load of new players. Um, so there were a few of us going to Navarre, and my friend at the time was coming with me. And we actually ended up finding Justin, who was the leader, or one of the leaders of the old group I was in. Um, and he was happy to have me and my friend join him. Um, so I rocked up. Having made a very fighty Navarre Thorn, um, really sunk all my skills into fighting, and then got there and didn't have any of the balls to go into the field. Um, so I, I basically created a character I couldn't play. Um, and rather than sticking with what PD let you do and, and basically just going, I can't play this character, and putting all my points into something else because they let you basically move your points around the first time. I went, no, no, I'll play it fine next time and ended up playing it for what, two, th three years? And yeah. never going into battle with a character that had all their points put into being a fighty character. Um, so I basically did nothing for three years apart from just sit around a campfire, which was mostly empty because the two feet, as the name suggests, are mostly off on their two feet doing things. Um, and then I went to Wintermark. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll interject a little bit uh, for the beginning of this story because it 
is fun. <coughs> um, so Ben has inadvertently asked the right question here to find out all of this. So what character and nation did you start with and then how did you move to Wintermark? So we'll cover all of that here. Um, Rachel has said, I'm imagining You're the... You're going to tell him no. Huh? You're going to tell him no. You're going to mansplain for me. I... <laughs> wow. Just wow. But yes. <laughs> no, I'll only, I'll only put in a few little bits here into the story. So and then, But you can tell... All the other bits. Uh, Rachel has said, "I'm imagining the a whole new world musical number with you two, but on the back of a war rhino." God. I, I would happen if I hadn't spent four years not fighting. It, yeah, it would have happened. Yeah. So, what had happened was is that I had gone up to Helen and her friend at the time, and they were brand new. So I showed them around. I helped them set up. Um, Shut up, Ben. We see. I see you. <coughs> and um, and that was it. They were. There was. We basically came up with the reason why they were there, and we decided that you and your friend were going to play Max nieces. Do you remember that? Yeah. And time in came and went, and I was stood around. We did the big, uh, the big standing and stuff like that, and Helen's friend then came up. And was just like, and I was just like, oh my god, it's you! So big hugs and all that went round, and I was like, just like, well, where's your sister? And they were just, just like, I don't know. It's like, has something happened to your sister? In character, I had no idea. Out of character, I had no idea. And so Mac went off on a massive hunt looking for it. I think I threatened a lot of people as well. It was great, but also very, very Mac. And um, then we found you. And then we slowly got you out of your tent and involved. Yes, no, I think I was in a tent for four hours. You were in a tent for four hours. So this this is why we say things like, uh, with it, when it comes to things like anxiety and anything like that, you're in a good place. <laughs> and that, and there are, it is a safe place to go to. But anyway, so we'll move on, move on from that. So then... Years and years went by. So how did you join Wintermark then? What happened with all of that? Uh, I'd like to say I didn't hate Navarre, okay? Like, no, Navarre culture-wise, like, I still miss Navarre before anyone who's going, like, oh, is it that bad? I just picked a character that I couldn't play, um, and Navarre is mm. still my favourite place to go chill in the evenings. Um, yeah. But I moved to Wintermark um, because, well, firstly... I wasn't enjoying my character, um, and then it was because you, because so Steve and I were in the same hall, uh, steading, striding, well you were the steading leader, yeah. um, and we'd been basically spending quite a bit of time, well you particularly with Ashen Hall. Hmm. Um, and then I think Bron or Smith was quite keen to start his own hall. You were kind of basically everyone had always said you were going to leave Navarre, that you were going to go to Wintermark. We all knew it was going to happen. It was just when. Um, and I wasn't, you know, enjoying my character, and I enjoyed, you know, s sticking with you and Josh and that lot. So I went basically when Steve went, I was like, yeah, I'll come with. Um, absolutely love the Calavesi mystical kind of brief bit, bit, you know, crazy shaman kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and kind of just took the plunge, really. And it's paid off really well. Like, I've, having played, I think, for me, um, Calavesi kind of almost begs you to go a bit, like, creepy mystic and... An apothecary and that kind of stuff. You you kind of can't avoid it. Um, <laughs> Not laughing at you, hun. As a, yeah, I, I know, I know. I can see what they're saying. <laughs> I was. I'm a mob, Steve. I can see it. There we go. Moom's got it. Moom's got what I was attempting. I was trying to pour it so it sounded like I was having a wee. Ah, oh, it's all gone now. Anyway. Oh. This is the respect you get, guys. Um, yeah, sorry, I got it. I 
I'm, I'm rambling, fine. Uh, completely distracted me. Yeah, basically, <laughs> can we move to Wintermark? The, the character briefs just let me try out an aspect of the game that I wouldn't have thought to try in the bar. Um, yeah. And I enjoyed it far more than I did, you know. And, and with this character, I've not confined it to a box so much. Like, I did plunge a load of points into a carry at the start. But I didn't do everything. And I also had, like, because I didn't know what I wanted to do with my first character, I stopped spending points. So I built mm. up, like, I came into this new character with some crazy number, um, which I basically just used to buy a load of potions and whatnot. Um, and uh, I finally worked out the courage to go into battle so I can actually put points into Ambi to make use of my swords that I bought three and a half years ago. <laughs> you did well. We all know it's a beer, Steve. Yeah, I know. I, I filled it up too much. So I, I, I am very, very sorry. Um, yeah, so yeah, that was, uh, so yeah, so we, we had, we tried a couple of things, didn't we, to get you involved in fighting, but I think if you've made a character that isn't your, isn't your thing, then go following through with anything is just going to be difficult, yeah, because you're already not in that mindset. Yeah, just don't make a character that you're like, I'll, I'll grow into it as a first character. Do not do not create something that you think would be an amazing concept. Mm. Create something that is an amazing concept that you can play out, and and that's all you need because it's like I tried to make a she was basically a throwaway character because you know I was expecting to go into battle, be really crap at fighting, and die, but at least I would have tried out that aspect of the game. Instead, I made a fighty character who never went into battle and therefore could not die. <laughs> Yeah. Um. <laughs> so I'm just reading back of those comments. They're just making me chuckle. That's really good. Oh my god, pouring that drink. Jesus wept. Sorry, Helen, but Steve bombed you out there. I'm very sorry, everyone. Um, I think that's a phrase that happens in my daily life. Steve bombed you out. <laughs> it's because I'm a twat. Basically. <laughs> you just mad mm. without an Accent. Yeah, essentially, I think. So, um, Ben said, this makes me feel less bad about worrying about points. So, I think, yeah, that, I, mean, I didn't spend any points on Mac for two events. Because I didn't know I wanted to do anything with him. So, and then I stuck around. So, then I started to spend points and Mac's now had, I think he's up to, I think it's, I think it's like 18 points spent on him. 18, yeah. 18 to 20 points spent on him. Something like that. <clears throat> ben, no. You behave. I'm, I already owe the channel like seven. Um, yeah, I'm counting. Yeah, I know. She's got a list. Um, so we've got... Yeah, so it's... All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you've basically got to spend a shitload of points doing a shitload of things about a shitload of something. You, you don't, don't need to spend a shitload of points. That you you it's all dependent on who you've got about you. If you don't want to spend your points, you don't. It's all down to how you roleplay as well. So I could I reckon I could roleplay Mac in that field without any points and get away with everything still. It's not about cheating the system. It's all no, it's definitely not about cheating the system because you won't cheat the system. Because they always do find out. Yes, because I do phrase things horribly. I'm not a wordsmith. I'm nothing to do with that. Um, so, it's, uh, year one, E2 character, and I've only spent 10 points. Don't worry about your points. Yeah, spot on. That's, that's exactly it. Don't really don't worry about your points. The point system has a really good new feature where you can trade out one skill per event, which is really good. Because I have five points locked up yeah, in stuff I can't really use. Uh, I haven't had a look at that bit yet. I did. To be honest, it's great. I've already used it straight away. First thing, mm. first day it came out, bam, straight in there. Mm. I think I got. Don't you? Remember? Yeah, I think they may have. I, I don't know. I'm not like super glued up on the point costs. But yeah. Like, um, 
I thought Amber used to be two. Yeah, it's only I'm one. I'm pretty certain it used to be two. It's one now. Mm. Which is hilarious, because Amber's like one of those things where it's probably the hardest way to do fighty, fighty things. Um, but yeah, what did I do? I took dedication. <coughs> I dedicated to vigilance. Who would have thought? Um, yeah. And I wanted to do priesty things, but then it wasn't super my cup of tea. Um, so the first thing I did when that came up was just get rid of dedication. Mm. Yeah. And plunged another point into more potions. Yeah, Ben said that he's bought shield. Um, I think that's. Um, Matt Dorn. Oh dear. Oh no, Matt. You have to. You. I want you to. Uh, yeah. To. Uh, to uh, expand on that one, mate. I need to know why you hate Ambi now. You've said it. Because <laughs> uh, I have Ambi, and I love Ambi, and it fits my character just perfectly. The whole throw yourself yeah. face first into a shield wall, perfect for what I do. I so. Considering we had like the fighting practice and I tried sword and board and ants and whatnot, Ambi is just so much easier for me. So like I'm not a tall person. No. I'm just not a tall person and having all these big cumbersome things just slows me down and means I can't do anything. Yeah. I like to get right in there with these lanky people that are all around me and just go for their ankles. Knees. Balls. It's fine. Um yeah, so that's, uh, he could do a few hours on how much he hates Ambi. Okay, um, I think that there's a lot of stuff out there that that aren't great. I think like thrown, but I think it, it's going to take someone to come in with like twenty little knives or something like that into a battle, and just be very very close to what they're doing, then pick them up and then keep on going. It's gonna it, something needs to happen to thrown to make that shield to make yeah, shield make that thing right. viable. I, f I feel, I get the real sense that Throne is one of those things where it, it, when it was like created, they almost never finished making it. Mm. But like, I, you just think in a world where you've got like all these massive shield walls and stuff like that, um, like Throne is quite clearly just a poor skill to take, like you wouldn't yeah. take it. Um, mm. So I, I just feel like there must be something they thought it was going to be specifically useful that maybe never even made it into the game or something. Uh, yeah. Um, javelins. There used to be a lot of javelins being thrown about at the beginning. Uh, I don't know if Matt would remember uh, the monster crew. They used to pass out... Um, 30 odd javelins to people and you'd have a unit of javelin throwers and when they were together yeah. and they did it all it was devastating oh yeah but I guess the problem uh -huh. is like we don't do that anymore do we it's an expensive skill yeah yeah it really, really is yeah world money. like archery is expensive yeah. and you at least get you know more return and less likely to break stuff mm. yeah so um, uh, coffee is uh, subtle brush has been playing a lot of beat saber and is tempted to take ambi yeah, I th I think at, at the beginning concept, I think everyone gets their ideas in the head of what they want their character to be like, to look like. Um, uh, PD had about 30 javelins made at the game creation as well, a few hundred arrows, but over time they got stolen, lost, broken, and it's silly money to remake them. Yeah, that's exa that was exactly it. Uh, I saw at least half of those javelins get get squished, trodden yeah, on. 30 quid a javelin. Just yeah. Money. So imagine a like, hundred people wearing plate, chain, anything like that in a shield wall, and then all of these arrows and javelins are on the floor, floor behind them, and then they just get oh, yeah. slowly trodden on back, walking as you as you walk backwards over them. It's it mounts up. It massively does. But I, I like people like you know I know that I I get like super super sword anxiety. You know, those moments where you're like, I've got to hit the deck now, or I've been cleaved or something. And it's like, I do not want anyone breaking my weapon because they go down on top of me, or, you know, because it's hit the ground or whatever. Mm. You know, and that's because, you know, so you're almost protective of it because it's something you own. But when it's not, it's like, can you imagine that people just, imagine if people just didn't care that these things were lying around. They would just stroll on over them because it's not theirs, and it's not anyone else's. Yeah. Like, it's just a nightmare. <clears throat> yeah, so there's new minimums on per arrow and stuff like that as well. Um, 
Really, if you buy in bulk, you can get them a lot cheaper. I say, I think, I'm pretty sure I've seen them for like five quid an arrow as well in places. But that may have changed now due to, as as for calls on javelins, not sure about that. I don't think there are. I don't think I don't think you I don't yeah I don't think you can call for a javelin. We'll have to have a if someone's got if someone's in the wiki, then with impale basically means infinite impales. Yeah, if someone's in the wiki, have a look at yeah. see if there's for javelins or something. Then oh, there are absolutely no calls on javelins. Okay, right. Matt. So yeah, well, so yeah, it kind of it it kind of puts the the whole the kibosh on it all then. So, yeah, it's but a shame. I I like I like I love talking to new players about what their character concepts are, and it's amazing how much they have changed. Um, uh, chatting about whether it should have a call. Uh, there, there are no calls. I just thought it would be neat to have one. Ah, yeah, it would be good. It would be interesting, but it would have it to be a sensible to call. Because I, I could stand two feet from you and throw a cordless thing in your face, call him pale with it. Yeah. It's not. I, see, I haven't. I, like, I was never interested in taking throwing, so I've done no reading on it. Yeah. It does not work like archery in that there's a ma minimum distance. Nope. What a skill. I just feel like that skill was never finished. Because I got pulled up by a battle ref in a skirmish where I got hit in the back by a javelin from two feet away. Now, these things, it's like getting hit by someone lobbing, gently lobbing a uh, cushion at you. So, you know, just gently lobbing it. And it just gently bounces off your back. And then it's just like, I didn't feel a thing. And the ref came running over and goes, you got hit by that. It's like, got hit by what? It got hit by what? <laughs> it was like that. And it's like, I had no idea that was there. It was it was pretty brutal. Uh, did you hear about the spear of Hayek? In the early years, it has impale at will. Every single hit was impale, um, or cleave when it's thrown because it's slightly weaker cousin of impale. Yeah, uh, I did hear about the spear of Hayek. There was also a hammer that had. Oh, is that the one um, that had? Um, yeah, it's is sim that the one they had hung up in the bar. Uh, yeah, unlimited strike downs. Yeah. As well, but that that was for one. Couldn't use it in a battle. It was a skirmish, and it on, and it only lasted for one skirmish, and it only lasted for one event, <laughs> as well. Yeah. Because I remember uh, the ref who was there to watch it basically just came out and just said that was dumb. He says that was a really really stupid thing to have around. So yeah, because I got sponsored for that skirmish, and that was insane. So they gave me this hammer. It was bound to me, and it was just like, yeah, unlimited strike downs. It was like, oh wow, okay. I walked around that battle, and everything I hit was just strike down, Do strike down. We still really do that now. Like we we we've really min maxed the game too much. It's very easily broken once you're quite rich. Oh. Like that is the one. One, you know. I, for a game that has like an I, this ideal of prosperity and letting money essentially flow round, like it, you can become ludicrously rich. At which point, you you just not like, you just yeah. gain the system. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, you did. The the hammer was the the follow. Because I remember going up to the uh, the, the next event saying, "Can I use the hammer again for a skirmish?" And they just went, "Oh, you mean the hammer that has three strike downs on it now?" <laughs> and it's like, oh, okay. It's like, can we recharge it at all? Can I do anything? It's like, no, nope, that's all you've got. It's like, oh, okay. There's still OP, but yeah. So they, it really got nerfed, but it had to get, it had to be nerfed. It really did. So, but I, I was saying, um, I love to talk to uh, new players uh, and comparing what new players wanted to do at the beginning of the game to what they want to do now. Yeah. Uh, considering half the monster crew on a medium and below armor, it would be abused massively. Um, yeah, any calls like that, it would be. Um, yeah, people just start throwing all the money, and then you buy the you, your pay. It's a pay. Then empire becomes a pay to win, and that's not what they want. So, mm. but I was gonna say. Um, so when I started playing empire, there were so many players who um, I do apologize if you can hear the wind. It is. I think it's blowing a gale outside at the moment. It's really loud. I've got the kitchen window open. And um, 
everybody who came to Empire was just like, I want to play an assassin. So there suddenly became this huge call for assassins. So, uh, like, biting blades. So there was a lot of assassination attempt when there were just assassinations of people going around uh, with that and a crossbow. So yeah. you'd, you'd get, yeah, you'd get venom, venom and impale, I think it was. So you just get, nice yeah. So this was when venom got rid of your bleed count altogether. So it meant if you so you get hit with venom, so that meant um, you had nothing at all, and then you get hit with impale, so it means you were just dead. Has there ever been an assassin's guild at Empire? Yes, there has. I think there still is, isn't there? <laughs> no, no, they all got killed. Um, another exploit was the original uh, Golden Fire Scales armor. Originally, it gave you back all your hits when you use an unstoppable. Wow. People were floating around with about 10 hits with potions and stuff, and then a handful of cheap Black hero hand. point potions. Yeah. Is the Black Hand the one that, that is dead? I was pretty certain I heard of one a couple of events ago. I think they were starting another one. There was one not so long ago, but that was when the militia walked up and went, I'm looking to hire the Assassin's Guild. They went, I don't know what you're talking about. And they went, I hear it's out, works out of here. I need someone killed. I'm not in the militia. And they went, oh, okay, yeah, they're out back. Honestly, and then the militia, militia, yeah, and then the militia just rushed the tent and killed everyone. <laughs> it was really yeah. good. Uh, PD realised how broken it was when most of the crafters in Dawn were making them on rotation. Yeah, it's... A lot of stuff was being made, was being made like that, and it all did fall apart. It was, it's, it's just a case of trying to. I do like the fact that PD, when they find these sorts of exploits, they then are able to turn around. Excuse me, and go. Well, we'll lessen that a little bit, so it makes it less worthwhile. Yeah, but, I mean the thing is, like in a game the size it is, and the fact that you know the fact it's got a wiki and everything, it, there are inevitable inevitably going to be like holes and exploits that you you know mm. it's just you got to shore them up when you find them yeah yeah so because because we have so many new people in who come along to this and that who haven't fought yet what is i mean what's what's been your how you have you done a skirmish yet i haven't done a skirmish but you've done the one but ready to die <laughs> skirmishes are great and you've done the one battle haven't you yeah. Funny enough, I think I actually prefer, like, I know a lot of people prefer monstering, mm. um, or cherry picking, or whatever you want to call it. Um, and I don't know, I, I like, I, I can see why, in the, like, I think the best bit was when I, like, we ended up pressed up right against that fence, and, and the, like, the refs had to come and go, actually, you guys have got to stop, because you literally, these people can't go back anymore. And they are about to get completely stepped over by you guys. Yeah. And like that real moment of, oh my god, we're actually screwed. And that was like as an orc, you know, not even as a character. But I do find like. Yeah. There's something about the thing. adrenaline rush of like walking onto, um. Of the, on walking into battle. And like the high you get even before you walked in, like that anticipation high of like this is gonna be. Crazy. Yeah, because I was um, having I was having a chat with um uh, with Ben. Uh, oh my god, I am so bad with names. I'm so sorry. I was having a chat with Ben and a few and a couple of others uh, just off the chat, and uh, we were just name on, t on Twitch or, or don't ask me things I don't know. I'm oh, terrible at these things. I think it was Ben, Rachel, and. Uh, I think it was Becca as well, and we were all just we were just there chatting, oh. yeah, and we were all just chatting about like battles and fighting and stuff like that. And I just said how great the, the buzz that you get when you're stood. I mean, I think Matt, Matt, anyone who's fought in the battles will back me up on this one. When I say that you're stood at the gate and it's like nothing's, it's not you're just chatting away to people. Nothing, it's not particularly exciting, but then your egregores start doing their bits because where they're opening the gates, they're singing, they're all motivational, and they're like trying to big you up. And you hear that, and you're going, okay, we're about to go through. So you get the butterflies a little bit, or and, and stuff like that. And then you... Um, 
Thank you, remembered. Yeah. <laughs> and then you get when people start to go through. So the last battle I did, the orcs went through first, and then my unit went through second. And we came through after the orcs, and everyone is there. It's either side of the gate, just there going, come on, you can do this, go and kill them all, go and do whatever you got to do, and they're, re they're really cheering you on. You get goosebumps, the hair on the back of your neck stands up. It's, it's so good. It's so, so good. Um, See, I always compare it, like, like, having not done it and having, like, I built it up in my head for years and years, like, this horrible thing I couldn't do. And you can vouch for this, like, I used to get closer, mm -hmm. I, every battle, I used to go get kitted up, mm -hmm. get ready, and I used to start the walk to the gate, and I used to get further and further each time and never make it. Yeah. I would check it out and run back. Um... And then actually going in, it's almost, what, like, to me, it was like when I had my tattoo done. Or yeah. Like in the tattoo, I was like, oh my god, never doing this again. This is crazy. Like, oh, it hurts so much. And all this stuff. And then, so that was like me walking into the battle, like, oh my god, what am I doing? This is stupid. I'm going to die. Because um, bear in mind, like, my old character was quite tanky. Because she put all her points into fighty things. And, like, I didn't really have any hero points or anything. I was really, like, um, what's it, the extra hit points and stuff like that. Um, mm. So I could have taken quite a few hits, and I had semi-decent armor and everything. Um, whereas this character is, like, heavily apothecary, heavily non-com, really. Um, so I was, like, a, squ I was a squishy boy. I had, like, what's it, what's it, I had something like base plus two hits or something. Um... Mm. Which is really not that many if you're getting stuck in on Ambi. Um, no. No. And and I'm kind of like, I'm the potion person for our hall. So it's like, I'm carrying <laughs> all the good stuff. <laughs> you are you are more valuable to our hall than I am. I'm, like, if I were to, in a battlefield, in a real battlefield, if I were to die, I'd be the richest person in the field in terms of material worth I'm carrying. I yeah. reckon I'm carrying thrones and thrones worth of potions at any one time in battle, because everyone gets like a, like they all get their potions they want, and then I carry the extra backups and herbs. So it's like they'll they'll chug all their Scots meads and everything, and then they'll come back to me and go, "Do you have any more?" It's like, "Yeah, yeah, make it rain." Um, and, and so it's like I'm really like one of these people. It's like I don't want to go down, and I don't particularly you know, want to get stuck anywhere, because I haven't got any of the, like, hard skills, really, or the physical skill points to get mm. me out of it. I'll leg it, but I can only leg it so <coughs> far before everyone catches me. Um, but, yeah, and when I was actually in battle, it's like that adrenaline hive before you go in, and the fact that for two hours, it almost doesn't feel like two hours or however long it is, because you are just constantly in that, like, tension, like, is mm. someone behind me, you know? You're constantly, yeah. especially when the field gets fragmented, when it's like there's a battle going on like 200 meters that way, but then you've got to keep an eye on the fact that 50 meters away there's another orc line forming up, and they're starting to come around behind you, and you can just yeah. see this, you know, you can see everything happening. And yeah, I walked out like, oh my god, that was amazing, I've got to do it again. Which is what I had with my tattoo, like, this is horrible, so the next day I was like, I need to do this again, I want to do it again. It's those hormone, like, adrenaline highs I'm just gonna I'm just having a little look through the uh, the comments as well but yeah the adrenaline high are what really push you through battles at any time um, I also have to say that the dressing gowns on the hooks behind you make it look like you've got ears um, yeah you've done well <clears throat> Uh, Matt said uh, the battles of empires are an amazing place for character development but it's passing development rather than active development the feelings and friendships built during battles are amazing but a lot of people struggle uh, to find the time to role play in battles yeah um, I never I don't think I've ever struggled to find time to role play in a battle whether it's it's not just shouting at people but getting things done picking people up seeing someone like looking around worried and just dragging them off and going nope get stuck in here stay with us and stuff like that. I think I've been in battles where I've had people in my unit from four nations because they've stuck with me because they've got separated from their unit and then they've hung around for the entire battle 
and we've had a lot of fun and then a lot of laughs and it yeah. gives me places to go and have a drink um coffee said i think my group followed you uh, and the atmosphere uh, was thick with excitement yeah i talk up battles i i talk <laughs> i wasn't apologizing for the smell either um i talk up battles big i really do i love getting involved and i know what i'm good at and i know what i go and get stuck in to do so like with the frost giants and that um it's what i saw mark humes's uh, last uh, one of his last streams and he was talking about the frost giants and he said he w kept on going back and, and getting knocked down by these things I didn't get knocked down by a frost giant I killed a frost giant <laughs> but it's just like his character is really on the edge of his emotions all the time. so he just gets stuck in I'm going to go and hit this thing constantly and just goes boom 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 and then he gets to the point where it's just like I can't do this anymore so he's got to get up and walk away and that's what he does so I love to get stuck in and I think people know that I'm always looking for a hole to hit and I'm always going to end up behind enemy lines. If there's a big monster there, I'm always going to go and dry hump it. Um, true story. Um, I'm going to twerk behind enemy lines. I do dumb things in a battle because I know that I can generally get away with it. Um, so, uh, Fran and Ben have said... Hold on once, hold on, hold on once, hold yeah, your horses. Okay. I'm, I'm just working my way through chat at the moment. So, um, uh, Fran and Ben said there, I'm nervous about going into the battles, but also excited. Yeah, I think big noob fear is dying on E1. Doesn't matter. If you die, you learn. It's the best time to die. It's the best time to die because then you can just get back up and go, I'm going to go off and do. I'm gonna go off and do this now, and you just essentially you can make a re-roll the same character, but yeah, in no, an, no, it's your yeah, first yeah, it's your first one. So you just re-roll your same character. I mean, that's what Smith did when Ulf died. He rolled almost the same character in a way as Bron, and that was it. Bron was the same sort of thing idea as Mac, where it was just a I'm going to make something and I have a think about what, what I want to play and now he's been playing Bron for like three, four years. Mm. So, I mean, these are all these are all great things. Um, human uh, Coffee, I, I second this. I'm now uh, friends with the Hall because I saved um, the lives of a few of their members and saw a thing that one of them did and it's now a Scop story. That's awesome. See, I had Scops offer to name Mac a couple of times when he was in the Navarre. And I've done exactly the same things now I'm in Wintermark. And they and people are coming up to me going, oh, I thought you did, but you need to do better. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I've done this before and I got named for it. They wanted to name me. But yeah, it's just like, fine. I'm nothing special anymore. Now I am in Wintermark, I see. Um, human justice. I, I was too, too ill for the battles, but staying alive on skirmishes wasn't too difficult. I found the trick is just keeping an eye on what's happening around you. Yeah, pretty much. It, it's just being aware, and I find ignoring what your your uh, the the people above you are telling you. If they're saying we're going to go over there, it's fine to go over there, but also have a look over there and over there and over there. It's, it's just about those sorts of simple things. So um, and the healers on the fields are carrying bank. Really, true story. A uh, funny story about hits, um, risk, and fighting. We had a guy in the Orcs who came into the battles with us for a few years, and all he was carrying was a walking stick made of wood. So not a weapon, um, a hand knife eight inches long, and he would just roam the battlefield, chilling out, looking after people, casting heal, and this was before the need for a wand to cast. It's also worth mentioning the guy was 60 plus and couldn't run. He got put on his ass once. That's awesome. Um, I think me and you are exceptions because we have done leadership... Uh, roles and we have been involved in the larger picture kind of stuff uh, whereas your average fighting uh, your average fighter is generally worried about who's around them and who's in front of them and that's all they can concentrate on yeah uh, gee waiting wait for the humping to come in this humpings always gets mentioned uh, we have higher standards for our own oh but yeah I think when it comes down to it if once you've done if you've been involved in aspects of combat either in character or out of character everything sort of mounts up and you're able to sit there and go I know what needs to be done here or I know what the best thing to look at it is as well 
so that it so combat and fighting comes into a lot of different aspects but it's a lot of it i will say and it comes into a battle do what you want to do it's it's your holiday if you are going to have more fun away from your unit going off and running face first into a into a land shark or a war rhino then do it advertising (laughs) no i'm really not i'm really not if that's what you want to do then do it if you want to if like if you want your character to die example because a lot of people will say i want to play a new character this event i'm going into this skirmish to die that is a great way of killing your character don't do murders because the militia hate it because it becomes an unsolvable murder but it still sits in their books that they still have to investigate um it's like the real police and you know they have a certain quota they got to fill (laughs) pretty much yeah um so it's so you get stuff like that so if you want to um if you want your character to die you you just say i'll I'll do this i don't want to come back anymore i want to move on do that. I just Get... mine. It doesn't have to die. No, you don't have to. Do, you don't have to die, but you just have to have have fun with it. So you get the role play from it as well. You'll get people saying goodbye and all of this, and you get the emotions there, and then you get the fun of charging into something on your own. Because people, I have seen it so often now. Matt's probably seen it as well, where you get to you, you stand, they'll all stand back, and you'll go and say goodbye to them all. And that orc line will be there on their own as you just go walking towards them on your own and you and you go off and you die and it's great. And the thing is is that if you when you get knocked down and you're bleeding out, you don't even have to wait, just get up. Just just go, I'm dead, and then just lay there. And then you might get lucky and they come pick you up, take you back, get your funeral, and then you go off and get your new character sorted. It's great. It's so much fun. Death your your own funeral is so much fun. Um I think I've missed a question as well. That's uh, yeah. I did. So uh, you know. <laughs> for Helen, if your current character died and you had to change nation, which nation would you pick? Stop recruiting, Ben. No, it's not Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> creepy shaman so my, my first character was very um practical and, and, and like scruffy yeah. and um you know while, while she was a thorn i i found I, my attraction to the navarre aesthetic was this very practical very you know as it is character yeah yeah um, and then I almost took that a level further in Wintermark, just basically made it a swamp witch, quite literally. Um, and so, like, right now, and I haven't delved, like, I'm really bad, I don't delve very far into other briefs when I'm not playing them. Mm. Um, but, obviously the orcs, but they just have to be the last ones we've got to try. Um... So pretty high. Uh, probably the next nation I'd try if I went to a different nation would be Varushka. Um, because I, it's like the ultimate and creepy, isn't it? Creepy woodsy people. Um, although I couldn't do the accent. Uh, and yeah, I'm not really sure. I think really Navarre, Wintermark, Varushka, and the Orcs are really the ones that appeal. But you kind of start delving into like the more, you know, fancy cultures don't you when you start going league dawn urism stuff like that i mean brass coast could be fun but i'm not sure i kind of like the like the kit is great i'm not sure i like the cultural aspects of brass coast um but yeah i think i think that's it i think i've kind of like got half of the field and i'm not that keen on the other half yeah yeah, um, so yeah. So I I'm I'm depending on what happens, probably league next for me, but not the sea wolves. Really? Yeah, probably. Really? Yeah, so far out of my comfort zone it's unbelievable. Yeah, so far away really from <laughs> No, probably not, but eh. I think that would be like an Arizona for you. Maybe, maybe. Um 
So, uh, Dino Wookie said, I think I'm going to like the fighting and how you explain your unit, Steve, sounds like so much fun. It is. It is. I, I really do focus on I'm here to have fun. The fun aspects, yeah. <laughs> so, I oh, will... People like... Um, Sorry. Sorry. No, we, not... Were you going to woman explain to me? No. Is that a thing? You talk over me, Steve. Keep going. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, I like I like to go into battles purely to have fun, and the generals and stuff like that will they'll leave me alone. I get I get left alone, basically. Um, I will happily argue back, and um, I I will happily use the virtue defense and argue with them as well, and, because it has been done. <coughs> But I want to... I mean, I hang back to start off with because that's when the fighting is developing. And you can see where it's all going to start off. And you will see where it's all kicking off. And that's when you start to pick your fights. And you get, you go in. You go in. Somewhere's failing. So you are coming behind them. So there is... For me, there is nothing more fun was when you see one flank go, nope, and they start to move back. And the enemy orcs start to walk through, and then all of a sudden they get a unit smack into them, and that unit moves back and holds it, and then that line is held, and that flank is held, and it all is like, yeah, that's great. The feeling you get from that is fantastic. I love it. Uh, how do players join the militia, and is it effective in play? Um, I've got a friend in the militia. I've got no, a few people in the militia. Excuse me, hiccups. Um, they love it. And it's great fun to join the militia. Uh, go to the hub and ask. There's things you need to do, but um, as has been said, there find find that one out in uh, find that one out in play. Um, do do do. It's uh, a bit of uh, all the glory. They're effective. Just yeah, find out in play. Um, just gonna, yeah. So oh, the nice are the, the black sorry. The last, the most recent concert. Mm. If you want to die, do a night skirmish on the Black Plateau. I've done three. They're fine. They're great fun. Oh. What well, I have, um, yeah. The whole accent for Varushka things is not on brief, uh, as per the wiki. Yeah, it's only, it's yeah, player's choice. Um, they love the scorn of when you said league. <laughs> so excellent. Um, I'm not a massive fan. <laughs> Yeah, you're the same. You feel the same way about the league as I do about High Guard. It's fine. Um, See, I quite like High Guard. Oh, I can't stand them. But I won't play them. <laughs> uh, glory is poop, definitely. Um, but I, I think, yeah. I mean, a, a night skirmish on the Black Plateau is great fun. It's great fun. But we're, we're kind of detracting away from the whole wholesome thing that I wanted this to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we've uh, delved in. We've, just... we've really delved into stuff. Um, so. Uh, what is your away from let's let's move away from battles and away from plot okay uh, Ben said is there any game that you'd like to try that you haven't Helen uh, so the, there's kind of two um, thanks for the subscription two, Ben yeah yeah I was just I just saw that I, I just remembered I got to do mine as well oh. um yeah, there's kind of two two areas, and it's not that I haven't, I kind of have touched on them, and I feel like I didn't give them kind of the uh, attention they needed to work out whether I did really enjoy them or not. So, the first one is, this character is meant to be um, a mystic, so mystics are like, so you... So basically, in Wintermark, you get your storm crows and your priests and your mystics. So you can be a storm crow and be a priest. You can be a priest without being a storm crow, and you can be a mystic without being either. Or you can be a mystic and be a storm crow. Um, in case you didn't feel like you had enough hats on. Um, and oh god, and um, I created this character to be just a mystic and so mystics kind of have this 
basically they're almost like in-game fortune tellers in a very loose way um, mm. where they can essentially give guidance on your sky so the idea is that you like go to them with you know questions that you might want answering or you know problems that you want help with and they use various different ways to kind of help you just make decisions based on what your sky says about you um, thanks for this uh, the so, sub coffee oh you're so popular I'm, I'm not used to it, it happened that we, we knew it would happen one day Steve um, that's not what my mum said my mum normally looks at me and goes who are you <laughs> <laughs> what a dick! <laughs> um, anyway, you see what I'm working with, guys? It's so unprofessional. Oh dear. Um, uh, carry on, carry on. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so I made a mystic character. My the idea with this mystic character was that so a lot of people do things like reading rooms or tarot cards or um, stuff like that, and I found this really old school way that people used to do fortune telling, which is with candles. Um, so I actually got like the full setup to do all these candle readings and and started really working out like how I was going to do it, and then I've not actually done it. So in the, what, year I've been playing this character, I haven't done it at all. Mm. Um, uh, so that's kind of something really I should put more effort into. Uh, fa um, uh, fa fa <laughs> Fowles just said, reading runes sounds like heresy to me. I think we'll be executing, uh, like, with two-thirds of the field. <laughs> I've seen it everywhere. I think you have to do that with the other mystics. <laughs> I, I, I think, um, I don't think people, they don't say they're reading the bridge, I say they, I believe they say they're already being, uh, yes, yes. guided by. Yeah, so the argument is that, like... <laughs> Our context priesting is the best. Yeah, yeah, it always is, um, but it's like, so, yeah, it's kind of this difference between, like, the IC and the OC is that, like, OC... The idea of fortune telling is kind of like, you know, a bit wishy-washy, whereas the idea of it in-game is like, there's almost like a certain amount of predestiny here. Yeah. While you may have paths, and um, which path you take may change things, but they are almost like, not as fluid. Um, so, yeah, it's all about this idea of like, you get forks in your skine that determine how your skine looks and whatnot. Um, mm. The other thing I wanted to try, again, is very similar in that, so you can be a mystic without being a priest. I really quite like the way, and I, I really like, like I said, I dedicated to vigilance as a kind of way to, you know, get myself into priesting more. Um, and I kind of dipped my toe in and then stopped, really. Um, it, like, I'm not particularly, um, boisterous or anything person and it just was like it, it was just causing like a clash I wasn't very comfortable with and I see so I kind of just backed down and I was like yeah you do you I'll just not do it um, but I reckon it'd be quite a fun game um, and yeah and I think the only other thing I'm doing at the minute like I've not really my character is all the things I want to try so it's like I want to get more into the apothecary guild and stuff like that now um, which I'm going to plan to do for next event. So there's loads of stuff. It's just whether I actually stick to any of it or whether mm -hmm. I just coast. So what's so next event then? So let's let's say E1 next year, we'll all be heading to the field. What's the first thing that you're looking forward to doing in that field? What's the th what's the big thing you are looking forward to? Uh, I think. So Roshar is gone now. So Roshar was the well, she wasn't the leader, was she? She was like the um, steward. steward. She was the steward. Yeah, 
She was the steward of Ashen Hall, and she's been around for donkey's years. Like, mm. I remember meeting her at my first event, and we kind of like, we were kind of like um, acquaintances, yeah. I see. Um, and it was only really the last couple of events that we actually spent more time together, and I think we got quite friendly. And like, we went to Lumi's Tea House and had tea together. And I, I was really quite touched because she let me have quite a big impact on how her character ended, really. Um, because we went to Lumi's, and she, she basically said to me, I, I'm really struggling with this decision I need to make, and was talking about it. And basically it was her saying, you know, I'm, I'm a bit nervous about killing off Roshar. Um, and she, she, you know, in the end I said to her, well, why don't you go talk to Shaman? He's really good at helping make those kinds of, you know, big decisions about life and whatnot. And she, she basically, we had a little laugh because Shaman is an amazing character. Mm. Um, I think you've mentioned him before. He's, you know, he's really, there'll be pictures of him all over um, the Empire boards because his kit is amazing. Um, and you can see him a mile away. That's how like famous this guy is in Wintermark. Like you know where Shaman is, and you know if you say to someone, "Has anyone seen Shaman?" At least one person will be will be able to go, "Oh, he's over there," because he's just such a like a charismatic force. Um, but because of that, he's both amazing and horribly intimidating as a player. Mm -hmm. There is a certain element of like. You don't know whether you actually want to deal with Shaman because it is going to wreck you for a bit. Um, and so she was like, to be quite honest, Shaman's amazing, but he really intimidates me. And I'm a bit scared of him. And she's like, I've been meaning to talk to him, but I'm avoiding him. It's like, well, you know, you just got to do what you feel is right and all this stuff. And then later that day, actually, Shaman happened to wander past. And I think he was looking for someone. I can't remember who. Mm. But I ended up like, for me, I don't talk to Shaman because I'm scared of Shaman because I think <laughs> he wants to read my sky. <laughs> mm. Like he keeps, like you keep telling him to read my sky, and he keeps looking for me occasionally. I did spend a whole like day hiding from the man once. <laughs> um, like every time he walks around a corner, I like ducked back round a tent or something kind of stuff. Um, which is pretty hard to do when you've got like massive horns on and a bird mask, it makes you really obvious. Mm. Um, and a stick, you know. But um, I actually sent him her way, I was like, Rochelle's looking for you, Shaman. <laughs> and, and off he went, and I saw him catch her. And yeah, she was, after she was like, it was really amazing, like he just knew what she yeah. needed to hear and all this stuff. But yeah. Like I ended up catching her. I caught her afterwards, um, and it was kind of like a mixture of Rosie and I seemed just saying, "I hope what I did was all right," because I didn't like explicitly ask. And I know that like it can be iffy, so I was like, "I hope it's all right. It was me that you know sent him your way." And she was like, "Yeah, it was great." So. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I want to catch up with her new character because she's going to play a Calabasi mystic. Mm. So we might be able to mystic up. Um, there's going to be a lot of goose for her. I would have already taken it, sorry. <coughs> uh, Dino has asked, uh, what is your most memorable experience at an event? Oh, we see, I probably just explained it there with Lumi's Tea House. Yeah. Uh, I go to events because I'm a social player. Um, mm. One of those dreaded social players that doesn't really do much. I'm like a background figure I'm there to make like everyone else's events cool because you know there's just background people milling around um, I'm not particularly there to get heavily involved in plot or you know do anything particularly fabulous yeah like it's one of the few times a year I get to see a lot of my mates are spread all over the country um, mm -hmm. I mean, I'd say in the last couple of events there's been a couple of pretty big things so like I said Lumi's Tea House and actually getting to speak kind of on level with Roshar for a bit. Um, I think another one would be the... Uh, we had a massive uh, Calabasi Mystic Goose Whisper. Yeah. Which somehow you ended up coming on, despite not being a Mystic. No, but I am Calabasi. 
You just blagged your way into it. I think I just turned um, up. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we had this massive goose whisper vision, and it was because, basically, what was happening was there was a new position opening up. Is essentially, it was a mystic position. And it was like... Oh, I, I can't remember the official title. It's like the head of the owlery or something. Mm. Um, but basically, what the position was, was that the person who was in it could speak... It's, it, it's basically super OP, and that's why I can't remember what it was, but it, it's something about futures. Yes, seer, that sounds about right. The raven seer, nothing about an owlery at all. Um, but... <laughs> Um, um, but yeah, so the mystics voted on who was going to become the, basically the person who sat in that position. Um, Cheers, Matt. And, and we then had a massive goose whisper sesh, and we went out, and it must have been like 40 people, something mm. like that, 50 right. people. Hun, you're yeah. going to have to carry on on your own for a second. Oh, am I carrying the stream? For a couple of minutes. I'll be right back. Do you need a wee wee? Um, it's alright, everyone. What should we say while he's not here? Um, yeah, so we went out into the forest and there was basically... There was fog, there was lighting. And so Goose Whisper's like a... Um, yeah, Goose Whisper's like a... Um, it's what you... You basically... You inhale the vapour. Um, so there's all this like mist, all this stuff, all this lighting, and then all these people started coming out wearing animal masks, um, and they were basically they were telling us all kinds of things. So like, it was about the Thule and the Jotun and all the like barbarian orcs, um, and it, it was just super intense. Like they were just whispering things at you and you were trying to piece together all these different things and it was like all the animals were saying different things based on like you know foxes are like sly so they were saying stuff like that bears are aggressive so it was like kill all the yorks kill all the you know we shouldn't be having a treaty with anyone we should just be absolutely obliterating them um absolutely goose whisper it out if you can get like a group goose whisper going it's an absolute laugh um, they do normally do, I mean, I don't know if you're the Calabasi, but they do, is he, is he going to walk in behind me? Um, but they, I knew he did. Um, just knew he did. Um, but yeah, Goose is great. I actually picked up the recipe to make it, just because so many times you get like um there'll be announcements like there's like a group calibrated goose whisper at some point in the evening and then like five minutes beforehand you'll get every calabasi in the field going has anyone got any goose whisper um so it's a really quick way to make sure you can get in because often you have to bring your own goose whisper to stuff so if anyone needs goose whisper just say and hit me up um uh, and then what else has happened? I mean, I'm carrying on even though I can read chat. Like, they, they have... Chat's got no interest in what I'm talking about. They were too busy laughing at you, sticking your head in. <coughs> it was funny. I am a comical genius. I knew you'd done it as well. I just could hear it. I thought it was being really sneaky there. It was, it was really good. <laughs> uh, right now, Steve's got... Uh, ha! <laughs> That's all the embarrassing details. Sorry. Sorry, carry on. Uh, Calabasi do not get, as, as far as I'm aware, and I may be wrong, and Matt may be able to wiki through me immediately here, but as far as I'm aware, Calabasi do not get any bonus RP with Goose Whisper. Do they? Yeah. Do they? Yeah. I thought it was everyone. What do you, what do normal people have? Uh, Calavesi, we get shared visions. We get the big. We're the ones who can get to go off and do the big, 
goose whisper thing in the tent. Others are not allowed. Oh yeah. That is a yeah, Calavesi yeah, owned. That's what I was... But I, I did say that though. If you're Calavesi, yeah. you can do the group goose mm-hmm. whispers. Yeah, we get it. It's a lot more vivid, and we get we get more yeah, basically. Just, I was just talking about the physical mechanical effects of goose whisper. Uh, like technically, if you were to take goose whisper on your own, the effects aren't different between anyone. Um no. Not really. We didn't know you had a third nipple, Steve. She only told you about the third one. I've got like eight, mate. <sighs> uh, as far as I'm aware, when you take so when you take normal goose whisper, and even in the goo- group goose whispers, um, what will happen is so the one I described is very um, specific in that it was a PD setup goose whisper party essentially. Uh, which is why it had all this extra stuff added to it, and it was so like atmospheric. Normally, if you take Goose Whisper, you'll, you know, you you pretend to take it. You may have whatever else happens in there, but you will end up with a basically a piece of paper that tells you what you've seen, um, and that is then what you extrapolate from. So you can make you can then say, you know, whatever relevance that has to your life or not. Yeah. Um, so. Goose Whisper and, and the Visions is more what the individual person running the vision and what the individual player wants to make of it rather than a specific vision driven by PD. So it's like you will have a piece of thing given to you by PD with something on it, but the actual experience is what the players want to make it. So you can pretend yeah. like whatever's happening. Um, you know, you could pretend you're high as a kite or whatever in it, um, but physically, that RP is all driven by those players, not by PD. Yeah, because the the big mystic Calavesi thing that I just turned up for, that was uh, in the swamps of Calavesa, and that was one that was that was one where they don't normally do um, that. M- it's not like, um, as has been said, a lucid dream, uh, interactive vision. <clears throat> and it's it's like, uh, that one was very separate because they had a very big, specific thing that they wanted to do because getting the ravens here was a big thing and, and all of that. And everyone wanted to get involved, so they made it a big thing. And it was great, even though the ref got us lost. And because oh, we, did wander around <laughs> we, we well, it was when we walked up to the bit, and then he just went, "No, we've come down there, so let's walk around this tree and go back." <laughs> and then it was there. Someone fell over, mm. didn't they? As well, because it was in the middle of the night. Yeah. So um, yeah, PD do write out a load of visions. Um, so if I were to, excuse me. Bless <laughs> you. Oh dear, thank you. Um, if I were to go up and take uh, take a goose whisper on my own, then I would get a vision. And the ref would go, you see this, this and this. This is what you do with it. This is what it is, rather. And what you do with it is up to you. What you will get isn't necessarily going to be specific to you. What you will get will be something specific to the field. So you could see something. So you could see a load of ships sunk uh, in Catazar Bay and you'll be going, oh, I need to go and have a laugh at the Brass Coast now. <laughs> Something like that, because, you know, that's it. But you don't, yeah, they don't give it to you to remember, because <laughs> PD rely on, like, um, like the whispers. Sure, whispers. And, uh, didn't really want to say it that way, but if you want to. Um, they, re- they rely on the whispers and stuff like that so you you remember something but you might change it a little bit so by the time it's gone from person a b c and d when it's got to the person who needs it it might have changed half of it might have changed so that's what they want I mean, it's but, a great plot driving mm. device oh it is it's great we had, who was it that someone had had a maybe it was goose whisper but I can't remember, someone we knew had had a vision was talking about it, and I can't remember who it was now, which is awful. Mm. But that's what drove us to go to try and sort it all out, like with 30 minutes left of the game on a Sunday. Can't and remember. We went, really? 
No, I can't remember. Yeah, I know. I can't remember those things. You can't remember. I can't remember anything. I, 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 I know bits. I know what I'm doing in the next event with it, but I don't know who told me. Right. I don't know who I ever heard it from. I hope they remember. <laughs> anyway, um, basic. Yeah, it was a vision about. Um, very simple. I'm not explicitly going to tell anyone. There we go. Um, for for IC reasons. Um, but it was a really good vision. And then it meant that me and Steve were frantically trying to sort it out um, before the game ended, or at least get somewhere with it before the game ended. And we did. So we, well, yeah, we did. We, I ran off trying to find the um, Ravens here, um, and of course she'd been speaking to the ruddy owls, so she was gone in barking mad, because all she had was 30 minutes left of the game, so what else was she going to get done in it? So I couldn't get any sense out of her. I was desperately trying to find her proxy. To vaguely get anything out of it, and then you managed to find the bloody Edgars and get it all sorted. <laughs> Steve is an experienced player, and I know that people in Edgars' position they want plot rolled out, and if it's at the end of the event and they got a chance to get rid of some plot and get it out to the field, they will. So that's what's happened, and we've got a lot of stuff. We've got a lot of stuff to go on with, so. I find that hilarious because mm. this is the problem. Steve says that, and I cannot remember a word the Egregore says. Can you? Um, no. This is it. I can remember explicitly the conversations I had with the Mystics and, and her proxy. Mm. But by God, I can't remember anything that was said after that. Yeah. Um, as, as Matt has said, it is a bit meta, but it's kind of forgivable. If if you're if you're desperate for plot something to do go see an egregore that bit is common knowledge the thing about them wanting to get rid of plot at the end of a game that's kind that's good you're going to be 70 30 there because if they've got the plot and they haven't dealt with it you still have to go up to them with i've got this what is it and then they will push you if you go up to them and they haven't got any plot and you got something i've got this they'll go oh, i don't really know what do you think it is and then they'll fudge around it all. So there's there's lots and lots of ways. So they might not be giving you anything. They might just be pushing you on with um, a bit of plot with a small p, as uh, Dino Wiki has put there. So do we prefer plot with a small p or pop, plot with a big p? With a big p. <sighs> English is good. So I, I think in those situations, I mean, I, I don't care. I, I will happily deal with anything. Uh, I've had plot with a small p where I've been involved in lots of personal stuff, but I've also been involved with it where it's been on a huge national sc national scale, and they're both great fun. It is really tiring. Plot is draining. It really is draining. So if you're involved in it ma on a massive scale, be prepared for it to take up 80% of your event, and you will come out of that event going, I'm tired but you'll remember everything because you'll all of a sudden have 50 people going, I need to write to you about this as well. So it's a lot of stuff that does happen. So player created plot is good um, if it has merits in the game. You will not be able to walk into the field and turn around and say, I'm involved in something to do with this eternal can but when it all comes out that you've nothing to do with that eternal and you have no sway over that eternal players are going to get pissy well their characters are going to get pissy and they're going to come and have a word with you and it won't be pleasant because that happened it was last year wasn't it i think with uh, me and a couple of others something to do with something big in wintermark and it turned out there was nothing there but that oh no that was a couple of years ago but now it's also yeah things <laughs> so there is a lot of stuff yeah. there so uh, coffee is I got hit by plot but didn't realise until it was uh, thirty minutes too late best place to be turn up if if it's too late then still go running after it if it's been dealt with find out what happened with it there might be something that they've so missed that's a, uh, that's a that's a first thing next event kind of situation yeah I mean I did. We had the plot with Justin when he died. So we got to do the wonderful personal plot of his whispers through the gate. And that was amazing. 
and that was where we invented knifey table and that was where me and kit sang uh, wayfaring stranger in the bar in varushka and we had everyone there just stop and listen you get stuff like that moments like that are things that you will remember for years in game because they're just fantastic you'll also get bits where you just go i don't want to do anything to do with that someone comes to you and go oh this has happened this has happened there's something big going on and it might not be and you just go i don't want to do anything no i'm ignoring it and in which case you ignore it and you don't get involved in that plot my favorite bit was the navarre egregore um turning around uh, in a tent where everybody was drinking and saying there's a dire wolf coming through the gate i've only got a knife is anyone else here armed? And everyone went, no. And I said, I've got a knife. And he goes, will you follow me? He said, we will probably die. And he went, and he was just like, and I was just like, yeah, why not? So we went running off together. And it turned out it was it was nothing. It was a piece of plot that PD had wanted to put out, but didn't put out. And we were the only ones stood there at the gate. And that was how Mac joined the Navarre in the end. And it was really good. It was great. It was really, really fun because it created that bond. And it was really, really nice. And I loved it. Um, so, uh, first of all, said, I once got a dream in my player pack because of other players messing around. It was a rather annoying time sink. <sighs> yeah, I can imagine that. I, I think when it comes to that sort of stuff, I've been dragged into pieces of plot, well it's not even plot, it's personal plot, where has been caused by OOC arguments, where OOC falling out has occurred and it's caused it to spill IC and then it has to be resolved IC as well. So that meant I, ha I was away for like an hour, I think, at another camp, sorting out their in-character and out-of-character yeah. problems for them. So I was essentially, so it's a little fly or something going around. Um, so I was essentially there for an hour sorting out their problems. I was acting as dad. And out of character, I was a bit annoyed. In character, it was so much fun. I got them to do so much stupid shit. It was great fun. So I turned it all on oh, its yeah, head. But that being said, if a couple of people had fucked around, and then it meant that I was then having to go off and spend a few hours sorting out their issues and they, had, they did nothing, I'd be, yeah, I'd be a bit put out by that. If it was fun, then I wouldn't care. If it was boring, then yeah, I would be a bit annoyed by that. So I can see where um, Matt's coming yeah, from there. It's, it, it's just that general idea of just don't bring your OC baggage. I see. Like that, that, you know, what's the point of coming and playing a completely different person if you're still going to carry around all that baggage and make it painful for other people? It does happen. It does happen, though. That's the problem. It is difficult. Yeah, it, it's like where. <clears throat> But it's also like where people say uh, when you go to work and that you leave your home life at home. Yeah, right. Whatever. It's impossible. You can't do that. If you are at home yeah. and and, like, and someone in your family dies, you can't go into work and go, no, I'm fine. I'm here to work. I'm here to work. It's like, no, it just doesn't work. Sorry. It it just yeah, it just happens. Like, it's as yeah. as I will as I'd all, I've always said about all this sort of stuff. Try to deal with it. I see. If you can deal with it, I see. Then great. In, if you can't deal with it, then there are things that you can do. Just avoid that person. Get them to stay out of your way, and then, and things like that. But that's on an extreme level. I mean, this one was just dumb, and I acted very, very Mac with it, and it was great fun. But yeah, I, I could see where where Fav was coming from though with that. That would be an annoying time sink. So, um, awesome. Uh, however. Yeah, yeah, wholesome. Sorry. Uh, player made plot is 90% of the game, and players decide the wars we fight and the way the Empire moves forward. It's all player initiated. Yeah, I think skirmishes, on the other hand, camp, um, I think I'd say a third of those are probably PD initiated. Uh, I've been involved in numerous skirmishes that have happened at the. At, they've, they've gone, you hear, time in, and then you hear the Egregore shout, to the gate now and that's why suddenly everyone's turned up and timed in wearing their armor and got their weapons and they're all ready to go and then unfortunately yes. for us yeah well we had to run across the entire field getting ready for a fight and then they told us no it's not ready for another 20 minutes so we're like oh. 
I just wish that the uh, egregore <laughs> shouted as camp as that to the gate. Thanks. It was just amazing. I'd love to hear that yelled across the field. Okay. Um. Oh, it wasn't dealt with, but I need to keep my ear to the ground about it because either Wintermark will love me or I'll die. <sighs> yeah, that's what it's like in Wintermark. Best place to be, I think. But I, lo I love getting involved in player made plot. I love it. I love to find out things, hear things, excuse me, do whatever. It is so much fun. It's There's nothing better. It's like going into. Rush, rush, rush! Wait, wait, wait! That's every fight, right? Yeah, this this one this one was uh, we knew about it beforehand, so we could be ready, and we were told that monster were ready and that we would have to get there. We had like five minutes to get there, so everyone sprinted. We got to the gate. I think only half the half the numbers were there, and they could have let us through, um, but they but monster it turned out weren't ready for like another 15 minutes and we were then had to hang around and then we had the full numbers and we went in and we annihilated what was in front of us so I mean we had that but I think personal plot uh, to an extent I do like I I was I'm doing um, some recordings for a video uh, for a project uh, away from this and uh, I was having a chat with uh uh, with Ginny, who many of you will know from the streams, uh, and we were talking about um, like romantic plot in game, and I basically turned around and said how much I hate it, and I don't look for it, and I don't want to be involved in it. And then we were talking about things and things that she's heard and stories and stuff like that. And it turns out I'm involved in a lot of it, and I just don't realise. But it's more of the fact that I will propose to everybody who walks, and. And things like that, and um, and as people have pointed out to me, Max's relationship with Grim, as well, is also plot. <laughs> it's for a lot of people there, and it's th it's things like that. So there's a lot of stuff that goes on with personal plot, and it can be whatever you want it to be. That's why it's personal plot, and you and you drive it, you push for it. If you want to make your character a general, um, a senator, things like that, that's up to you. That's that's your plot. That's your personal plot. And then you get people involved to help you do that. That's you getting other people involved in personal plot. And it's fantastic to see and do and hear about and stuff. So, yeah, it's really, really good. So, all right, I think, I think we've been going for an hour and a half. Yeah. We have done well. I've sneezed. I've snuck in on you. Not in that mm. order. No, nope, not in that order. I've put my, uh, my, my preferences first. Sneezing. So, what's the... Are you looking forward to... Uh, so, away from the... So, not in character, what's the big thing you're looking forward to doing next event? What's oh, the, what? um, it's a real toss-up between... Um, what's it? The Wooden Spoon? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I might. Uh, it's, uh, it's inevitable that I'm going to buy some more stuff that I don't need from the traders. <laughs> I'm hoping uh, that Amber Wolf workshops there, because I'm totally having an engraved skull this time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think he moved. Um, he, he was based in the UK, but I think he's moved back over to Europe again, though, so I'm not sure if he's still coming, and I'm going to mm. be really gutted if he's not, because I've lost the opportunity. But, yeah. Mac and cheese in a piece of bread. Yeah, wooden spoon. Yeah, fantastic place. Big up the wooden spoon, definitely. I love their their uh, big breakfasts. Do you recommend the, um, basically anything, but the pulled beef, like, bread one, that, that's literally heavenly. Yeah, really, really good. Me, I am looking forward to... I love it when I turn up into the field. And as you're driving through and you see... It's like, oh, there's so-and-so. Oh, there's so-and-so. And then you park up. And it's just like you throw your tent out. You get your tent up. You throw everything into it. And in essence, you're 95% of the way there. And then I get to walk around 
and you go up and see everybody and it's just like the look and it's just like the big smiles on people's faces when it's like I haven't seen you in so long and it's just like yeah really good to see you how you doing it's only a 30 second chat but it's fantastic fun fact they have less than 1% food waste that's amazing and I'm not surprised I am not surprised at all on my list oh bread and butter pudding um, yeah but yeah I think Thursdays just in general mm. like like bear in mind that for a lot of people Empire is like one of the few times they get to see people that are probably all over the country that yeah a good mate so it's like you know you see these people four times a year maybe less if you don't do all the events um mm. and you know I think that genuinely the E1 next year and potentially E2 for people as well is going mm. to be a big emotional thing for people because yeah. I, I haven't seen people like Lisa for what, a year now? Well, we're seeing them in like three so, weeks. Well, yeah, I know. But, you know <laughs> that would have been a year. It would have been, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, like all these people that you, you, know, you invest a lot of like emotional energy with just because laughing is by definition quite intense. Yeah. You know, you, you you get used to seeing them at these certain times a year and suddenly you don't. Hmm. Yeah. Oh. Thanks, coffee. Thanks, mate. Yeah, the, the is a it's a it's a food it's a, it's a it's one of the best in the field. Without a doubt. It's amazing. It's so good. I think it's uh, they do things called trenches. So imagine a big bread bloomer thing circular like that with the top cut off the insides pulled out and then filled with mac and cheese all english breakfast oh my god it's so good it, i i i make i make them here on occasion <laughs> i have been known to do them they are incredible they are absolutely incredible um, I mean, there's all kinds as well, but yeah, like you can have a half one, which is a far more reasonable portion, um, which means you don't have to feel like a horrible person for eating it. Well, considering it'll be the only thing I normally eat that day, so for me it's fine. Yeah. So I'll I'll have that, and the amount I drink as well that at events it all really keeps me going. But it's uh, as far as said, three thousand players easily going to be the. Uh, biggest event PD's ever had I, I think that's a um, I think that's an understatement to be honest I think I think it'll be I think we'll get more than 3,000 uh, it's going to be so good it's going to be so good I can't wait uh, Sue's, Wigan, Wooden Spoon saved me a bit one morning just the trencher with boar stew was exactly what I needed uh, yeah, uh, the inside got turned into bread and butter pudding awesome one gets me through like 12 hours. Yeah, I'll, I'll have my breakfast and I'm done for the it. day. The guy who runs it is just genuinely, mm. like he recognises people, mm. so he'll have conversations with you when you go get one. you be like, oh, yeah. again, usual. Mm. And it's like, no, no, I'm having the ball one this time. Like, oh. I love having, a, I love, like, I love having yeah. chats with that guy. He's a nice guy. Really, really nice guy. Really, everyone, yeah, really, really friendly. And he, he loves to have a chat. Uh, it's not icy they dress icy because they're in the field but it they don't like play characters or anything like that because they're literally busy all the time so it is so good but they're, they're fantastic i love that place so much it's fantastic mm -hmm. I mean, and then in i mean to be fair all the food is good mm -hmm. it's just that in particular and to be fair the queues are out the door all the time because it's so people like it so much but everywhere you go mm -hmm. is good food Matt, no, Matt's been LARPing with a guy and his twin brother for about five years. Maxwell brothers are amazing people. There you go. Well, t tell them that they're getting some love then from uh, from us. So, yeah, really, really are. Well, the inside is as icy as a food store can be. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. But, but yeah, that place is fantastic. I mean... The German is a good, is too, good too, which are by God. Mm. I just love it all, to be honest. I can't speak highly enough of, of any of it to be honest mm. so it's all it's all so good um, the other brother teaches that word weapon craft yeah 
Koi Pian? Koi Pian. I like it. The Koi Pian is my final answer, please. European. There we go. I was waiting for the... <laughs> Sorry, Matt. I, I was waiting for the uh, the spelling correction. I was I wasn't hundred percent so. Legend. Just stupid, I'm afraid, so. No, I'm just stupid. You're the one with the who's who just got a a, a first. Don't humble brag for me. You got you, you just got your first in uh, biology. Oh, I can't read. Think you'll find it's pronounced European. It's <laughs> wow. Don't take the piss, you. <laughs> yeah, so I'm looking. I'm looking forward to the next event, the Thursday night, and getting the whole community, all of us, lot together to sit down, have a drink, and have a laugh because it's going to be such a good laugh. So, uh, friend, uh, fantastic. Wolf said, "Congrats, Helen." So there you go. Well done. Congratulations. Uh, Dino Wiki. A real random question: How much real world money do people spend on average at an event? <sighs> Depends on what you're doing. Um, yeah. I have I have spent as little as sixty quid. That is little, and I know people who have spent over seven hundred quid because they've turned up with nothing and they've literally bought weapons, armor, kit, everything. Yeah, I mean. Uh, so hi Nexus, thanks for popping along. Uh, yeah, all all good. Hope you're hope you're doing all right. Um, I saw your thing on Twitter, so I hope you're doing okay at the moment. Uh, Matt Dawes says, yeah, the wooden spoon came to the field, made it the other vendors uh, have to up their game quite a bit. They really, really do. Uh, 60 quid, okay, saving time. They, uh, 60 quid is because I've turned up with all of my weapons, all of my armor, all of my kit, food, and alcohol. I forget everything. And then it's like 60 quid, and I'm walking around, and it's like, I know I've got food at the tent, but I want I want to go and get um, something from. I want to get a trencher. Uh, then we spend an evening in the forge, and that's more money because that's that's barbarian coin in there, and that's it. So you do spend a little bit more. So it's it's up to you really how much you want to spend. If if you wanna if you want to bring more, then bring more. Um, I've known someone to spend two grand. People do spend a lot of money. At the at these sorts of events, you can spend as much as you want because believe me, I see Helen there with her finger in the air. But I'm going to keep on talking for a little bit because there are so many traders at these things. You're guaranteed to walk around and go, oh, yeah, uh, I need this now. She's got two fingers in the air. Um, as Matt said, that that was actually going to be my next point. Bring some money as a just in case. Leave it spare because you will need it. If you you might suddenly go on the Sunday, oh, I've done this, I've done this, oh, I haven't got this and I need this. And yeah, so that bit of spare cash does help. Helen, what? Oh. <laughs> well, what? Just, I mean, I tried to start say, saying something, but you just kept talking over me, so I gave up. Um, I was, I was going to say that your first event is probably your biggest spending event. Um, especially if you're going to play a com character. I know like a few people have got weapons and stuff already, but the general like consensus from people is often you try things before you buy things, particularly armor and weapons. Yeah. Um, especially if you're going like fitted armor, stuff like you know, mail and stuff is normally all right. But if you're going to get something that's got to be physically tied on to you, um, so I think for my first event I bought. And a lot of them have like card. A lot of people have card machines now, so you're not talking about carrying necessarily tons of cash on you. Um, <laughs> have you seen Fowl's post? <laughs> no. Say, <laughs> so bring at least fifty quid to each event, then you can buy some food when you're inevitably you don't bring enough, or some keepsakes, perhaps yeah. some medals. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent plug. Excellent plug. plug. Um, oh. Uh, yeah. So my first event, I bought my swords which are a matching pair and that cost me a hundred mm -hmm. then my chess piece was 90 quid mm. um and then on top of that we did a bit of shopping you know various other bits and pieces i bought 
you know, and stuff like that. So I reckon I probably spent, I reckon in the realm of 200 pounds, over 200 pounds, 250 pounds, my first event. Um, and then it depends whether you're picking, you know, a lot of times you say to yourself, oh, I'm, I'm not going to actually uh, buy much this event. And then you go in and you go, oh, but that's a really nice dagger. Cha-ching. Um, mm. So it's like, um, you know, a lot of stuff can be expensive and it depends where you go. Um, chow, for example, nice stuff, very expensive. Um, you know, if you want mm. a tunic and you and you want it in budget, don't go to Chow's. You can buy a perfectly decent tunic and then... Don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say that. Chow, Chow's is great. Chow's is very, very good. Chow's is great. We're not... I'm not... I'm, great. No, 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 no. No, we're not going to... I'm not gonna okay. put down a Charles does some really good. I mean, I bought my I've got a couple of pairs of trousers from Charles, and that and they were only a tenner that I bought them for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got I've got tons so of stuff, and she's really good for mm. skins and tankards as well because they. Oh, and tankards. Yeah, because they were a, they're a fiver for a tankard, and she has a massive rack of them. So every 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 trader in that field, some of them are more expensive than the others in certain aspects. Yeah, yeah. And then, but in other uh, in other places, you, you you best just have to look. Yeah. Look at just have to look people. around, but yeah, I just yeah trying to keep it all positive, wholesome, yeah. and that. So I'll tell you off probably later, and then you can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So now I've killed the mood and everything. <clears throat> so uh, as Matt said, the number one problem with Chow, her stuff is um, is so good, everyone has it. Yeah, a lot of people have that yeah. stuff from Chow's. I, I where did I get my gloves from? Were they vel velvet, yeah. velvet, velvet something or other? I can't remember. I think they might be called cool velvet glove, aren't they? Velvet glove, yeah. I got my I got my gauntlet from there, and they were really really nice velvet gloves. Um, I got my glo I got my gauntlets from my they, they suede. And then I promptly ruined yeah. them because after my first event, I got home and washed them wrong, so they are now s quite stiff, and <laughs> so I've ruined them immediately. But I still love them. So um, I I went to I went and spoke to Matt for some help with some uh, some stuff to make my boots and that look more icy, and he's helped me out there by pointing me. Uh, in direction so it's all really good so i mean a lot of i think kit is good when you because you can buy it a little bit cheaper out of the field yeah as well because i mean a lot of your kit you made yourself yeah didn't you? so well, i think you know the difference is that there is an argument to be had like empire is a great place for discovering shops even if you're not buying mm. <clears throat> Like I say, that's how I came across Amber Wolf Workshop. Um, you know, there's like, I would have never, before my first empire, I would have never known which shops I do and don't like. And, you know, where you could buy certain things and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Because um, a lot, of, when you look at a lot of LARP stuff, you do end up with a lot of very sites that are based in Europe or America. So having. Um, mm you know, basically a place that advertises a lot of relatively local UK based companies. Yeah. And no one wants a buffer. Wholesome. Oh sorry. For God's sakes. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> on here, Steve. Sorry. Um LARP specific it uh is make to last at LARP. You might be able to get equivalent kit elsewhere, but at least with LARP kit traders, you know their stuff's going to hold up to the stress. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think shop around, but if you, if you want to, if you're determined to come into the field, there are so many traders there that you can buy specific pieces of kit. But I think when it comes to weaponry, definitely come into the field. Really, really do. Or if you want something custom made, then con contact a good few months beforehand so that you can collect in the field and that so I mean I can't I'm saying that you don't have to buy in the field there are you know there are your 
well-known traders who stuff will always typically put, like always in asterisks not always mm. but well, most of the time passwords and check because they know what they're doing they know the system um, and you know you're not off you will very rarely pick up a dud piece off of them and if they do that you know they're decent people they'll go yeah that's my bad um, yeah it's when you want you know when you're not sure what you want um, when you potentially want something that's a little bit more on the expensive side or something that isn't very generic then you mm. probably want to pick it up in the field I knew that I wasn't going to be able to wield anything very you know big or anything I didn't particularly know what I was going to be good at using and it turns out I have two whippy little swords that no one else can use very well um, but they just happen to work for me and I wouldn't have known that without picking up everything and realising that your normal swords are too heavy yeah pretty much yeah, because I've used them and I can't use them at all. Your swords, I use them in a skirmish and I can't use them. They aren't for me at all. Uh, most traders have a return when it fails; uh, they replace it. Yeah. So yeah, if a weapon fa or if a weapon fails, weapons check, then you just take it back and they'll go, oh, okay, they'll take it straight off of you and go, do you want something else? And if you say no, then they will give you your money back. Doesn't happen too often, though. I will say that. So, but still, right. I think okay. Hour forty six. Now we've been going for. We've been doing well. So I'm going to call it there. Uh, big uh, bit of news is in the next uh, next couple of weeks. Next few weeks, I suggest. I think I'm going to do. We're doing a. We're going to do a raffle. Uh, I haven't decided on logistics or anything like that uh, ticket pricing or anything like that um, but everyone is being so good at offering stuff and things so if you if you've got anything uh, ooh, the raffle is happening oh yeah definitely thanks for the cute stream I've I've poured a cider and made it sound like I was weeing myself man <laughs> that's um that that's not cute if that is cute for you, then I worry about you, your moon. That's um, the poor, definitely. So I would say, uh, yeah. So we've got the raffle coming up. So if you've got any old bits of kit you want to just you want to donate or do anything like that, then just let me know. Chuck it into the Discord. Uh, if someone can chuck the Discord thing, do the Discord thing in there for me. That'd be awesome. Then. Um, yeah, so we got that. So if you want to donate, just do anything you can. Thanks, thanks everyone for doing that. Um, if uh, so, what else have we got going on? Uh, Patreon. I'm, sorry. Patreon. Oh yeah, I've got a Patreon as well. Uh, the Patreon is literally so that people can get stuff. So you can pay two quid a month, I think. For a Patreon, three quid. three quid a month, and when I get over fifty quid a month from Patreon, that's going fifty quid towards give a giveaway every month, so someone can get it towards a weapon or something like that. Um, and then obviously for tickets and things like that. So and yeah, it's been quite popular. So we're we're I think we're halfway on Patreon already to the first giveaway, which is cool. Um, yeah, I have the wonderful t-shirts that you can get too. I don't want to bore everyone with this stuff. Uh, I need to come up with a good way of just advertising it all in one foul swoop. Um, you could put it on your end screen. Oh yeah, no one watches that. <laughs> what was the other one? Uh, yeah, Geek and Sundry. That's this... Uh, something of September. A Monday in September. I think it's the 7th of September. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the 7th of September, I've got two people from Geek and Sundry coming on. That looks like that's happening at 1am our time. So that will be uh, probably YouTube for most people uh, to catch up on that one. Um, I've had a chat with the the OK people at Armchair Armies. He's alright, I guess. Might like him, I don't bearable. know. He's bearable. Yeah, the bearable people at Armchair Armories. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, and we're going to get something sorted so we can get a load of people to well say a load of people I think we're going to have a chat we're going to get a few people we're going to go up and do a video 
of a load of us, of a few of us making stuff with him and doing stuff. So they are, yeah, Matt's awesome. He, that was really, really generous of him. So we are going to go up there, going to do a video, and we're going to yeah do some stuff with them. So that will be really, really cool fun. Uh, I'm, I'm going to see about having Alex Smith back on on Friday coming, so a week today. See about getting him back on for a chat as well. Yeah, I can't think of what else. I need to be a lot more organised and prepared for this sort of stuff than I am. So uh, I'll try and catch the Geek and Sundry one for some ungodly reason. I'm usually awake at 1am. Mac and Grimstream. Um, I was funny enough was talking to Chris today, but I haven't mentioned it. I completely forgot. I will mention it, I will ask, and we will see what we can get done. It probably won't be in character. It will probably be an out-of-character thing with just me and Chris Chang. Okay? The same as we do with uh, me and Smith. So, But I don't know if he will. Okay? Uh, but I will ask the question and we can go from there. So, we can see what happens. We can go from there. I see Rosie. Either way, it will be fun to watch. Yeah. It will be really, really good fun if it happens. Um, I will ask... If anyone wants to see anything, any suggestions for streams or anything like that, join the Discord, let me know. Because we do generally do it. And I, or I do generally try to arrange it all. So, um, yeah. So that's going to be everything there, I think. Um, there's a Facebook as well. Um, there is a thing that I've put up to generally advertise all of this. Um, and I've forgotten that as well. See, I'm organised, me. Sorry. Um, I will get better at doing all this. I do. I. I promise you. But still, um, thanks for coming along, everyone. Thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. Uh, thank you for those who subscribed. It all helps, and it means that I get to do some more uh, amazing giveaways. There is a Discord link down. Not a Discord. A PayPal link uh, down below. I would love for us to be able to fund a webcam for PD. Because looking at Matt P's camera, he really needs it. Alright, so if anyone can donate anything, then it's all appreciated. And uh, I will probably fund the difference. And then whatever he gets sent, it will be from us all. Okay, so thanks everyone for watching. You all take care, stay safe, and I'll speak to you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye.